what is up guys and i do hope you're well and welcome back to another episode of r slash entitled parents with entitled people yeah a bit of both why not i wasn't going to post today because at the moment my head is all over the place and a bit mentally strained but i saw this post on our subreddit and oh my word my heart my heart these couple of doggos needed their space in the youtube limelight and with that being said let's get started the story is from Spaghetti Cake. Neighbor refused that our dog did any wrong. He killed our dog. So this happened at my grandmother's house in Alabama. I'm not gonna say the breed of the neighbor's dog because I don't want anyone making assumptions of the breed because of this particular dog. This happened in January 2012, so not everything will be perfect. So my aunt, whom I will call AS, has two dogs at the time. Riley, a good beagle shih tzu mixed boy, and Katie, the sweetest, goodest girl I've ever met. I've never seen as good and pure as Katie. She was a Shih Tzu. Both these dogs are ASs, but she said they could be mine too whenever I'm at the house. However, one day, my parents, sister and I just came back from Florida the week before. We got a call from AS. She was in the backyard with Riley and Katie when the neighbor's dog, I call him, I don't know, Dennis or something, started barking like crazy. This was normal. Dogs bark is kind of their thing, but then, Dennis broke the fence in between my grandma and neighbor's yards and started attacking Katie because she was the closest. He was a bigger breed and Katie was this little five, maybe six year old Shih Tzu. So he already hurt her by jumping on her and he was biting and scratching her. AS was screaming and Dennis, according to AS, shot his head up, got off of Katie and started running towards her. She had been frozen up to this point, but she snapped out of it, grabbing Riley and booking it into the house. She wanted to grab Katie, but she was too close to Dennis, as AS knew it would probably be too late to save her. After AS was inside, Dennis went back over to the neighbor's yard after a couple of minutes. As AS deemed it safe, she went back outside, leaving Riley, to see if there was anything she could do to help Katie. When she went over to her, she was already gone. Dennis killed her. No one knew what happened in Dennis's mind that made him snap. It was later found that he had rabies, but we didn't know that yet. So that was the long backstory. Now to the neighbor, who will be known as N. Other cast members include G, my grandmother, and that's it. AS was at home alone when this happened, so she called G at work after she found out Katie was dead, and she was freaking out, yelling that Dennis had killed Katie. It took a minute for G to understand AS, since she was understandably hysterical. Once she understood, G told her co-worker she was leaving, and started calling the rest of the family. AS also called him family. We received two different calls about it, not important to the story, but we did. G got home to a still sobbing AS, holding Katie while Riley was sniffing Katie and trying to get her to move. My heart. G called the police and told them that Dennis had tried to attack AS. He actually did get her arm, I forgot to mention that earlier, and they had killed one of their dogs. N was at work and no one else was home. N was called at work and told to come home and was also told that Dennis was going to doggy jail as I was told. I'm not sure if that meant a kennel or what, but that's where they took him. They took him to make sure he didn't try to attack AS, G, or possibly even Riley again. N got home and was pissed Dennis wasn't at the house. She demanded to know where her dog was and why AS and G were there. The cops told her everything that happened and even showed her the broken fence from where they were in the backyard, where AS had laid Katie down for the time being. The cops told her that she'd have to pay for repairing the fence and Dennis would have to be put down. This made N lose her mind. AS had to go inside since she was still shaken up and couldn't handle much more. N was yelling about how Dennis didn't do anything wrong and that all he did was kill a dog. This sent G off. One, because her daughter was put in serious danger and was hurt by Dennis and two, Katie was like her grandchild. There was not a single person in the family who didn't love her. The cops had to separate them and calm them down and they told N she would have to go with them if she wanted to say her final goodbyes to Dennis before he was put down. N started screaming that she wouldn't have to say her goodbyes because Dennis didn't do anything wrong. At this point, they had AS back outside and they were telling her she needed to go to the hospital to check out her wound because at this point, rabies was suspected. It wasn't confirmed, but just in case. Luckily, after hearing about the rabies, N finally I guess came to terms that Dennis really attacked a girl and her dog and that was going to be put down. She went off with one officer while the other took AS and G to the hospital. Much to the dismay of AS, who wanted to stay and hold Katie, she eventually went and got her wound cleaned and she would be fine. 
We did later find out it was rabies and he was put down. N went over to G's house and apologised for her behaviour and apologised about Katie and AS. She actually gave G a little cross to put on the grave they made for her. She kept apologising for how she acted and said she had the materials for a new fence as well. She turned that not to be too bad, just upset that she was going to lose her dog. She told AS she wanted to apologise to her as well, that even though she was upset she lost Dennis, she can't imagine how rough it was for AS to see her dog be killed. She moved about a year later, but they had made amends, which was good. Rest in peace Dennis, a good boy with a horrible disease. Rest in peace Katie, the best, most patient, sweet dog ever. And here's a picture of Katie. She was usually so furry we couldn't see her eyes, but she had just gotten groomed. <sighs> Man, I had to reread loads of this story so many times. I'm just welling up thinking about it. Oh my word. What you must have went through to your AS to see that that situation. And at first you think, like, fuck that neighbour man, what a piece of shit after what she first said, but uh, come round, give a cross and make amends. You can sort of see how she was feeling that she's going to lose her dog. I think anyone will flip their, flip their shit that they're going to lose their dog, you know. Anyway, I'm so sorry for you and your family to lose that beautiful little doggy, and for Dennis too. Let's hope they're running free in doggy heaven somewhere. Much love guys. Next we have a story from Howling Eclipse. Entitled Lady Decides I Should Change How My Store Is. Hey Daddy Cringe, love your stuff, I just had to post something here. I did post another story, but this one fits more entitled people than my other story. Heads up, it's not a long one, but left me with my jaw dropping, and my co-workers as well. CW co-worker, me, you guessed it, EL, Entitled Lady. So this happened to me just today, and it still leaves me with questions. I was working the drive through window and register at a cafe I work at. It's a name along the lines of Tardux. If you guessed it, it's a pretty big coffee shop in America and Canada. However, this story is in Canada, Alberta. I say, hello, welcome to Starbucks. What can I? Hi, can you please fix your drive through lane and make it bigger? Every time I come in here, I constantly bang my tires into the sides of the driveway. It needs to be fixed because this is ridiculous now. I'm shocked. How am I, a barista, supposed to fix a drive through lane? <laughs> that, would entail to, that would entail to demolish said lane and reform it to suit her needs. Um, what can I make for you today? Completely ignores what she just asked. She says, yeah, I have a insert coffee here. Okay, perfect. Anything else for you today? No. Okay, your total is... See you at the window. Lady drives up as I quickly ring a few more customers through. There are now being five cars behind her. This cafe is also super busy as it is our peak hour of the day as it is buy two, get one free deal going on. With only two people making drinks for a total of roughly a constant flow of 15 people and most getting the buy two, get one free deal. As I'm dealing with some food for another order, a CW approaches me, a shift supervisor. Did she seriously ask you to fix our drive through And has a headset on. <sighs> yep. She should drive better then, or just come through the cafe and not waste our time. The lady comes to the window. Hey, I heard it's buy two get one free. To let you know, ordering is taken at the box speaker and not at the window as it won't print stickers needed for the baristas on the bar, thus them not knowing about a drink and can screw up their workflow and delay others from getting drinks, so in other words, making other customers annoyed. I say, yes it is. Then make a second drink of that kind. I want to use the discount and get me mints acting as no other cars were behind her. Unfortunately, we aren't allowed to tell customers no, so I ring up her order. The other baristas are now upset they are getting yelled at from other customers in the cafe. Here are your drinks. She grabs them. Bye. And not even a thank you for the extra drink. I know, not an exciting ending where people get arrested or managers come in, but it still shocks me how dim-witted and entitled people can be. I am a barista. I just can't become a construction worker and go and bloody fix the driveway for one person. Also, she delayed our line for five minutes, where each car needs to be in and out one minute max. Come on, dude. You could have fixed the driveway. It's the least you could have done. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I don't know why people make these sort of complaints. I've heard complaints like that before. Why can't you just do this? Why can't you fix the shop front? Why can't you do that? Yeah, it's not happening, mate. Piss off, buy your coffee and fuck off at the door. You know what I mean? <laughs> Next, we have a story from, oh, holy hell. <laughs> EM says not getting a Mother's Day card was more hurtful than my brother's death. Oh my word, here we go. Hey daddy, long time listener, first time caller. The EM in this tale is my own mother. 
I should add some trigger warnings, specifically suicide and abuse, before anyone reads or listens should you choose to use my story for YouTube channel. You're in. Further, it's massively messed up and oh joy, it's all true. You'll see from the dates involved that this has been on my mind this week, so please forgive my need to vent. You vent away, that's what this channel is all about. By way of background, my father was severely mentally ill. I never found out what his actual diagnoses were, but I've heard paranoid schizophrenia and bipolar. I've educated myself on mental health and both fit certain aspects of his behaviour. But one thing he was without question was horribly abusive. He was physically abusive to my oldest brother, 11 years older than me, the youngest, to my other brother, two years older, and emotionally and abusive to all of us. Living in my house was like being a duck in a shooting gallery game. You just tried to get past him without getting shot and he was also terrible to my mother. My mother and I were incredibly close when I were young too close, although I didn't realise it until years later. I was a buddy against my dad. She'd tell me all the things going on in their marriage, how awful he was, made huge promise to take me and leave, but leave my two year old brother behind because someone need to take care of your father. Even at 11 years old, I knew that was messed up. Although those plans never come to fruition, she'd take me shopping, get me gifts my father would then rave about, was my number one cheerleader and best friend. My father passed away right after I finished college, literally six weeks after. I was sad because you can mourn a person or the loss of a relationship that would never be. I mourned the latter, but was also relieved. The reign of terror had ended. I thought now that threat was gone, my family could be close and happy. I was very wrong. My mother's personality shifted almost overnight. Before I was this golden child, a high achiever, won social and academic awards. She bragged about me to everyone. She still bragged about me, but now rather than be supportive of me, she would tear me apart in private. She went from being my best friend to a cold, uncaring and even emotionally abusive witch. I finally realised she'd be using me all my childhood as a refuge against my dad and now that was gone, she didn't need me anymore. I'd become disposable. Aside from being fantastic PR, going to law school, making law review, blah 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 about what a great mother she was. My oldest brother died of cancer in 2001. I was super close to him. He'd been my father in the absence of my father. We were both a huge Star Trek nerds and went to conventions together. He'd done what he could to protect me from my dad, which wasn't much, but I appreciated the effort. Losing him hurt like hell, but I knew however how much I was hurting. My mother was feeling it a thousand times worse. She'd always say losing a child would be the worst thing to happen to her. In her anger over his loss, she became even more vitriolic towards me, but I put up with it. I was a big girl. I knew what the score was, but I couldn't just cut her off and be responsible for taking another child away from her. In May of 2003, I'd just started a new job, had three hearings in a week, and had the flu. I did not make it out to buy my mother a Mother's Day card. Instead, I called her about five times on Saturday. No answer. On Sunday, I called again several times. Midway through the day, suddenly she has an answering machine. That means she went out and bought an answering machine, hooked it up, never answered the phone, and never called me back. I called repeatedly on Monday as well. On Tuesday, I called again and left her a message. One of three things has happened. You've fallen, you can't get up. You're dead, you don't want to talk to me. If you can get up, call me back. The next day, I get a letter. She must have mailed it on Monday and it was the most hateful, spiteful thing I'd ever received. I don't remember it all. What I do remember is, you're not sending me a Mother's Day card hurt me worse than your brother's death. She pulled out every check she'd ever written to me or on my behalf from 1988 to 2003, $18,975. She spent on or for me. As my best friend pointed out, that was $30 a week, which wouldn't have kept us in beer in college. She listed out our grievances and summed it up with, and that doesn't count the hell out to put up with from your father because of you. The letter ended, I need time to heal. Don't call me until May 18. Now after years of emotional abuse from her, I had enough. Blame me for a lot of crap. But to blame me, the youngest kid, for her marital problems is absolute bullshit. Don't want to call me? Fine, I accept your terms. May 18 comes and goes. So does most of June. On June 22nd, a local police officer shows up at my door, looking absolutely miserable. He tells me to call the sheriff's department in the county my mother lived. And I knew exactly what happened. I called and my suspicions were confirmed. On June 22nd, my mother was found dead in a house due to an intentional overdose of pills and wine. She apparently did it on June 17th and wasn't found for days until someone noticed newspapers piling up at the door. I was surprised, but I was not shocked. 
My mother had let it be known that she would take herself out when her quality of life was no longer greater than the quantity of it. I was upset, naturally. It's my mother. But I knew this was supposed to be my punishment. This was my fault, you see. She intended to destroy me because I didn't send a freaking card. I fortunately had a fantastic therapist and even more fantastic friends. I mourned my mother, but I had never accepted responsibility as it was never mine. I'm doing just fine now. Got a kid of my own who's amazingly awesome. He was in the same house as me all day Mother's Day and didn't even verbally wish me a happy Mother's Day and I'm still alive. So I suppose I'm fairly well adjusted. So I guess it sort of has a happy ending. Don't misunderstand me. I've had depression and anxiety issues my entire life. I've been suicidal a time or two. I'm deeply sympathetic and empathetic to folks who go through it and I hope no one reading this thinks I'm not. That is simply not what happened here. I've come to realize my mother was a narcissist with a few other issues thrown in for flavor. If you're feeling suicidal, reach out to someone. But seriously, if you do it to punish someone and make them blame themselves, you're an arsehole and no one will miss you. Sorry for the novel and thanks for reading. Live long and prosper. Holy shit. Whoa, Holly Howe, that was a crazy, sad story. I'm so glad to see you're doing well and you've got a little one yourself now. That is just fantastic news and you spent Mother's Day the right way <laughs> with a crazy little, little one running around. That is the way to live. But geez, for all you've been through, I can't believe that just, obviously it wasn't totally just over a Mother's Day card. There's obviously some mental issues, like you say at the end, and no one thinks of you in a negative light, thinking that you're like um, not being sympathetic or empathetic, as you said as well. There's no way anyone would think that of you. That'd be silly. I want, I really want to say that it's really selfish of your mother for what she did, but again, you don't know what was going through her head at the time. All sorts of things could be demonising her, and I'm not saying what she did was totally fine or whatever because obviously it wasn't it wasn't the case whatsoever to write you that shitty letter was absolutely awful uh, but the happy ending in this is just so good <laughs> it was much needed on this one otherwise that would have been incredibly depressing thank you so much for sharing that old holly hell and i hope you and your little one are doing very well now much love now we have a story from your average ecky uh, I don't know. Sarcastically tell me to sue you over a failure to pay? Sure thing. So I live in a rather new, fairly nice apartment complex in a generic US state, and I happen to live on the bottom floor, which is great when moving. Well, back in March of this year, the people above us started a small kitchen fire somehow. Don't worry, I checked afterwards and everyone was okay. But their sprinkler system sent out so much water that it flooded my apartment, causing about $500 in property damage which isn't a lot by any stretch, but definitely something I would like back. So we got a claim filed with our upstairs neighbor's insurance company and they agreed to pay us back the $500 we lost in property damage. It is currently June 2019 and we have not gotten our check. I've left them countless voicemails telling them that they need to hurry up with our check because we need that money back. Eventually they called and said it was such a minor payment that they weren't gonna put it on the books and told me they weren't gonna pay it. I reminded them that they emailed me saying that they would pay it and they sarcastically told me to go sue them. They knew their lawyer fees would be more than $500 so they didn't think I would do anything about it. Big fucking mistake on their part. I'm a petty motherfucker. <laughs> I'm a petty motherfucker who's notorious for the... <laughs> I'm a petty motherfucker who's notorious for sinking the ship just to kill the captain as it were. So I called up our local state department of insurance and reported them for failure to pay claim and negligence. Additionally, I took them to small claims court as well. The action I took wasn't the satisfying part. What resulted from it was completely worth my time and effort. My lawyer fees amounted to just over $3,500. The court ordered that not only my lawyer fees be paid by the company, but also an additional $500 be included to my insurance check as a punitive fee. So as that stands, the insurance company already owed nine times more than they would have if they just paid me my money. But it gets better. Now they're being audited by the Department of Insurance for negligence and failure to pay, which could potentially cost them up to hundreds of thousands in legal and punitive fees if found guilty of the above violations. So over a mere $500, this company could potentially end up losing hundreds of thousands of dollars, as well as a drop in stock price and a bad public image that's hard to rebuild. Don't fucking keep my money from me. Not sorry. <laughs> Oh, do you know what I was picturing this whole time? I just had the picture of Grumpy Cat in my face. 
<laughs> oh my word, I love it. The part where he says, I'm a petty motherfucker. Oh my God, I was losing it. So good. I could just see him getting wild, sat in his apartment on his sofa, really grumpy as hell, thinking, fuck this, I'm getting them back. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, your average Eki, for sharing that story. Much love to you. So good. Once again, guys, thank you for joining me for these stories. If you did enjoy them, you know what to do. Much love. Thank you very much. Take care. Goodbye.